Yeah. So, any questions for me? Yeah. Hi, Arun. Um, can you please yeah. just give the logic to connect the customer and the account number, uh, how we can do, because the account number, after account number created only we can enter the customer detail, right? Mm, you can enter the customer details. Account number is auto-generated. Okay. All right. Fine. I, I'll discuss that. Is any, any, okay. any other question? Uh, no, just I want the logic, how we can do that. I don't want, I, I, I can try the program, but I want the logic, the basic logic, how we can do that one. Sure, sure, I'll do that. Okay. I'll discuss that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, you, you guys got the recordings? Yeah, we, we got the recordings, yeah. Okay. Yep, it's done. Hello, Arun. Yeah, yeah uh, I was wondering, uh, in case of the bank um, program, do you want us uh, want the customer to have more than one account or just no, one? No, for account? typing we can have only customer. Each customer can hold only one account. Okay. Okay. For, for timing we can have only one account for them. Okay. okay. That's it, right? Oh, any other question or is that that's it? No, no more. Oh, yesterday recording link, uh, I didn't upload it. I'm going to upload it today and uh, you will have it access. All right. So, let me just fill it up this day dot four dot assignment, not completely. You have a customer, you have an account. So it's going to be the exactly the same way. You got an account. So what we did in the last day when I want to open an account. Oh, I just increment the counter. Right, perfect. So here we go account number is account number counter plus plus. perfect now here you have a customer right now you're gonna have a constructor for customer Now within this, you're going to create an account for him. Then here, you're going to have your getter and setter methods. But you will not be having a setter method for account because account is created by your constructor. Your constructor is going to create the account for you, so you don't need a set method to it. Whereas you need a getter method, and for rest of the attributes, you need a getter and setter. Now, in the bank, we will be creating an account, right? So when you want to open an account, all right, but we are not having an account array, rather we have a customer array. So I'm having a variable to keep track of the number of customers who open the account. I'm having a variable to keep track of the to keep track of the number of customers who are having an account. So let how do we open an account now? It's exactly the same way what we did last public. You're going to return the account number, open account, 
So if somebody has to open the account in the yesterday's program, okay. If somebody has to open an account in the yesterday's program, the only input value he gave was balance. What amount he want to deposit? Today, we take that to the balance or you can say opening balance. But before to that, we need our three more attributes. What do we need? Uh, the social security number, the name, and the gender of the customer. Now, as I did in the last day, first I check what is the opening balance. If the opening balance is greater than 5,000, then only I do it. But though he is ready to deposit, will my bank allow more than 30 customers? So I need to check that. If the customer counter is less than the length of the array, You are creating an object for whom? Look at this. You are creating an object for customer. Now when you create object for customer, customer constructor executes, right? Customer class constructor invokes. Customer constructor gets invoked. Now from your customer constructor gets invoked then what do you see in the customer constructor? You see a account object. Then account object will be created. So when you create customer objects the account object is also created. How? From, because when you create object constructor executes and from that constructor, you are calling the account class object. You are creating the account class object in the customer class. Then account class constructor executes. Then it is account number is generated. Then what next I need to do? You need to set the balance, right? So look at this. How do you set the balance? Customer so. customer account. But customer class doesn't have a variable called balance. Customer class doesn't have a variable called balance. So what you do is customer dot get account because account is created already. In the previous case when you create customer object customer constructor executes and that is creating an account object then you set customer dot get the account then you set the balance of the customer then after that what else you need to do you also need to set the name and all the stuff dot set name because name belongs to customer so you are not calling get account. Only the balance belongs to account. So you are calling get account dot set balance.
then you increment the counter so that the next customer goes into the new position and you return the account number but this account number belongs to customer class no this account number belongs to customer class no so how do you call it get account dot get account number. Yeah. Uh, did I did I answer your question? Okay. Right. I hope you guys can take it from here and finish off the rest of the activity. So in the last class, uh, I spoke about differences between the static members and instance members. Then how do we access the static members and instance members inside the class and outside the class? Then we also saw what is overloading. Then we also spoke a little about the constructor. We also spoke a little about the constructor. So we, we did a lot of things. Right, we spoke a little about the constructor and uh, we, we, we were talking about the object oriented concept and we also spoke about has a relationship. Now, what next? Okay, so there is one more thing before I move further I would like to discuss. From where your program execution starts. Now from where your program execution is getting started. Right click source. Uh, I'm creating a package. Day.py. Here I got a class. So let's say uh, I'll static block demo. Here we go. I discussed that you know when I try to run the program. When I try to run the program, or maybe this way right click run as java application or I have a button here on the toolbar so what happens you uh, when you do that normally your java programs are executed in JVM and your JVM stands for Java virtual machine that takes the responsibility of executing your Java program but it cannot run it. JVM is not going to run your dot Java files. JVM is not going to execute your dot Java files. So what happens is normally you are using an IDE integrated development environment but this is how exactly you do normally. Uh, if you don't have an integrated development environment then you write a class this way Then I am doing here. Then I save the file under the desktop. I am doing it under the desktop. Then once I save the file, 
Now what I need to do? This is my dot Java program. This is my dot Java program. I would like to run this program. So I open the command prompt, the DOS prompt, you call it as. Where is my file? It's on desktop. I cannot run my Java program. JVM cannot run the Java dot Java file. So first I need to convert. Why it cannot run? Because it's a human understandable code. The kind of code what I have written, it cannot be interpreted by your machine. It can be interpreted by your human brain. So I need to convert it into a machine understandable language. So we call that process as a compilation. So your compilation is the process of converting the source code into human understandable, oh sorry, converting the human understandable source code into machine understandable code. But how do you do that? Java C, hello world dot Java. Now what says? It says your Java C is not recognized. You see this command from we call it as a DOS prompt or a DOS disk operating system. So this command prompt don't recognize Java C. So I have to set the path or I have to ensure that Java C is being recognized by this command prompt. Then I have a command to do that. Set path equal to then I know where I install Java. It gets installed into my computer onto the C drive. Program files. Java. JDK. Then you have a bin. Then I pick the address. I pick the address of the bin folder which is inside a JDK and that is inside a Java and that is a part of program files. Then I end it with a semicolon. So now when I say Java C it won't say that not recognized. Now it converts my dot Java into dot class file it converts my dot java into a dot class file if you look at on a desktop this was my hello world dot java then there is another one hello world dot class now when i try to open this you cannot read it because this is not something which a human can interpret So you are converting your source code into a machine understandable code and we call the process as a compilation. What is the command helping you? Java C. Java C stands for Java compiler. Now I would like to run it. Now I say Java hello world. Right. Java is a command to run it. Now you see a message on the console on the window. Like you know call it as a hello world. So when I use the Java command, I am invoking the JVM. I am asking the JVM to run the program called hello world. So Java is a command to tell the JVM to run the program called hello world which is on the desktop. Now what your JVM will do? Now will JVM will try to look at the dot class file. It try to read this dot class file and it starts searching for this main method. It starts searching for the main method. And if you see, I try to disturb this main method. This main method takes string array as a parameter. I remove it. Now my main method is no argumented. My main method is no argumented. Now I recompile it again. Now I try to run the program. 
Now you see the exception. What it says? Hey, main method is not found in a class hello world. So when you use the Java command and you pass the class name hello world, in that particular file it starts searching for the main method. It starts searching for this main method. The moment it won't see a file, the moment it won't see the method, then it starts complaining. Main method not found in hello world. Please define it. So let me go back and modify it. Let me add string parameter. I add a string parameter, but this time I remove the keyword public from the method. Now let's see what is that you see now. I recompile and I try to run it again. Now what do you see? Again you see it's not found, please define the method. It want the method with this signature. It want the method to be public, it want the method to be static, it want the method to have a written type as void, main and with this. Well, what happened? What is missing now? Public. Now I add public, I try to remove static. Again you see the same thing. So the arguments matter, public matters, static matters, right? So let's go back and do it. Now let's understand the significance of the string array. Let's understand the significance of the string array, also the significance of public and also the significance of static. So first let me give you the significance of string array. Look. Or to be better, I do this. If the array length is greater than zero, then print something. Otherwise, just give a message. no input from command prompt. If the length is greater than 0, Then I'm going to print them. I'm going to print all the values. Observe carefully. You compile. Now I'm running it. So you see the message has no input from command prompt. Now observe here. So, 
I pass three so it went at three. So this becomes arcs of zero, this becomes arcs of one, this becomes arcs of two. That is the first array value, the second array value, the third array value. This is one. So I hope you understood the significance of this string array. You can pass arguments from the command prompt separated by a white space. Next, why public? Yesterday I discussed, like you know, if it, the member is declared as a private, it cannot be accessed outside the class. If you declare something as a private, you cannot access it outside. So we are declaring it as a public. So public makes the main method accessible outside the class. Public makes the main method accessible outside the class. That's the reason we keep it as a public. Uh, that's the reason it, 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 it prompted you or it, it asked you to declare the method as a public. Then why it is forcing you to declare the method as a static? Anyone would like to take a chance? Why it needs to be static? I gave you the reason for why it needs to be a public. Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, can you hear Hello. Oh, fine. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Did you hear me the first time? Yeah. Now. No. 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 Okay. So I was saying, uh, so that the JVM does not have to depend on an object of the class being Perfect. created in order to run the program. Yes. So normally, uh, I I said that. The instance members are available only after the object creation. In order to create the object, we need to start the program. Now imagine, if you make it as a non-static, the main is not declared as a static. If you don't declare it as a static, then it will be an instance member. When it be an instance member, when it becomes an instance member, then you need to create object to make it available. And somebody need to do this. But in order to do this, the program should get started. The execution should happen. Execution should start. Then only the object can be created. I want something which should be accessible before any object creation. Because in order to get start the program, we I need something which should be available before any object creation. So they make it as a static. So static makes the static makes the main matter accessible before any object creation or without any object creation because I need to start the program so I cannot depend on object creation because in order to create object I need to start the program first so static makes the main method accessible before any object creation perfect now with this, I also discussed how do we set the path when you write a program. Because when you write a program on a notepad, when you, you should know how to set the path to compile the program and run the program. And I also discussed the command to compile the program. Then I also discussed the way to run the program. Then I also spoke about the significance of 
the stringer a the public and the static and what is the significance of the main method your jvm always looks for the main method with string array and public and static so this is what your main methods start searching for when you say java hello world and your jvm will start searching for the main method in the hello world and that main method should have a signature And that's the reason when you try to run your application, you don't run other programs. You only run that program which got the main method. You only run the program which got the main method. You cannot do this. I, can, I cannot do right click on the account.java. You don't see something called run as. Run as Java application here. Because account does not have a main method. You don't got a main method to run. You can run only those programs which got the main method. Now, so just now we figured out that your JVM always looks for the main method to start the execution. Right? And that too the main method is static, it makes it available. But I have my next question now. I have my next question. Is it the main method which gets executed first or do we have something which also gets executed before? Let's see what happens. So I was able to print name. Then I was in an assumption that my main method is the first thing to get called. I was in an assumption that my main method is the first thing to get called. But before main method there is something else which is actually getting called. So your static blocks get called first before your main method. So these are like constructors for static members. For instance members you have a constructor, right? Constructor is the one which got the same name as class name. For static members your constructor acts like a, sorry, for static members your static block acts like a constructor. It initializes your static members. So before your main method your static block gets executed. static block gets executed uh, static blocks executes before main static block executes before main static block executes before main Right. So, any questions or anything would you like to add? So we spoke about the static, we spoke about the public and we, saw the, we also discussed about the, the command arguments and we also spoke about the static block. Alright. Okay. Then let me move on. So we, 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 we spoke about the static members. So let me move on to something called okay. inheritance. So I'm moving on to a next topic uh, called as inheritance. Now what is inheritance? 
building a new class from the existing class building a new class from the existing class is called as inheritance and we have what is the advantage of this one is code reusability that's the main advantage right you build a new class from the existing class another one is code reusability the advantage so we have some types of inheritance which are supported by java we got the first one as a single then you got multi level hierarchical then you got multiple which is not supported by java which is not supported by java here we go single multi level you got hierarchy now what is this multiple which is not supported by java is a single child from several parents a single child from several parents this is not supported by java now what is single inheritance is deriving a single child from single parent what is single inheritance a single child from single parent what is multiple single child from several parents multi level deriving a child from another child so is already a child class again you are deriving another child out of it now what is hierarchical is deriving several from single parent this is called hierarchical so let's discuss more about inheritance i am defining a class let it call it as customer now what do you see inside a customer oh no no i am sorry let's name it as personal customer now every customer should have an id then there should be a name to him the address where he resides then his home phone number then also is work phone number purpose so id customer won't choose on customer won't choose it so i'll get getter setter for all of them not for id getter setter for everything but for id it is only getter method not the setter method
fine this seems to be good now i have another customer i have another customer let me call him as commercial customer oh i'm sorry so of course he also will have a unique id then there will be a name for him too though is a commercial customer the company name becomes the name of the customer got an address too for this but here there will be no home phone and work phone whereas it's it's a commercial customer so means commercial customer is, it, it, it can be name of the organization a company which is trying to open an account a company which is trying to open an account so what i pick him as so in a company i cannot talk to all the people in the company right if somebody is opening an account on behalf of the company he i need to talk to somebody in the company so i just pick who i need to contact who is the contact person and what is his phone number so that i can talk to him there will be a single point of contact now the thing is i'm okay with uh, are, are you are you guys okay with the way both the classes have been designed or can we do better yes yeah we can go in the same class with the two different type of customers uh i i didn't get you can you come again uh in the same class we can define two different type of customer like the personal customer and the commercial customer because the details we are getting is the same as id and the name perfect but i have a concern if i try to put both of them into a single one then commercial customer will not have a home phone and work phone right yeah and yeah commercial customer will not have a home phone and work phone and personal customer do not have this contact person and contact person phone yeah so what do we do yeah uh we can do the, the basic information as a uh, one method and uh, for these two we can create two other methods in the same class mm so well, i'm not sure okay uh, so let, let's see All right so what we can do is we have some data common between both the classes All right so what i do is we have some data common between both the classes so whatever the data which is common between the both the classes whatever the data which is common between both the classes i am removing it if you observe i got rid of the id address and the home phone uh, sorry i got i created of the id name and the address i would like to define a class call customer so the common attributes i am listing down in a class customer
then I did getters and setters. Now what I do is, I got two classes, personal customer and commercial customer. I make them extend the customer and this is the syntax of inheritance. This is the syntax of inheritance. So the personal customer and commercial customer, they acquire the properties of the commercial customer and personal customer, they acquire the properties of customer class. They acquire the properties of customer class. So, I think this is a smart move because I am not duplicating the data. But still, personal customer and commercial customer are able to access ID address and phone phone, uh, ID address and the name. Right. Now my next question arises. In the customer, I declare them as a private. So will they be generated for personal as well as commercial? Will they be available for personal and commercial? The thing is, the memory will be allocated. Okay, let me discuss one more point over here. There so are a lot of things I need to focus. Here we go. I think I missed out that. So I define inheritance first. building a new class from the existing class you got the advantage code reusability then we saw different types single multi-level hierarchical multiple deriving a single child from single parent Deriving a child from another child Deriving several children from single parent Multiple deriving a single child from several parents deriving a single child from several parents and whereas this is not supported by Java so and uh, the example which we are doing is hierarchy because there was a customer dot java which got the attributes as id name and the address and there is a class called personal customer and there is a class called commercial customer there are two children extended from a single parent then the kind of inheritance is hierarchical but you got to look at the signature. How do you do that? How, with syntax. The class extends customer. Customer is a already existing class. And you are extending the features of it. Similarly, personal customer is also extending the features of it. Then I raise my question. ID, name and address 
are declared as private and when they are declared as private will they be allowed to share with personal and commercial so i'm going to answer this we learned a point actually the point was instance members of a class are generated when object is created so we we, we learn this when i create object instance members are generated so when i create object for customer id name and address are generated when i create object for customer id name address are generated but what happens when i create object for personal customer it's a child class what happens when i create object for commercial customer it is a child class so the new other point when we create object of a child class not only the child class members but also the but also the parent class members gets generated irrespective of access specifier means doesn't matter what access specifier they are sharing not it doesn't matter what access specifier they are sharing irrespective of the access specifier the memory gets allocated for parent members as well as child members so when you create object for the child memory allocation happens for child class members as well as parent class members irrespective of the access specifier then what is the significance of access specifier so let's talk about them we call them as access specifiers somebody call them as access modifiers we got a private as one then we have package private means we don't use package private as a combination right or you can say when i say package private no access specifier specifier no access modifier specified then you got protected then you got public so these are the keywords private protected and public and when you don't specify any of the three it is assumed as a package private behavior it is assumed as a package private behavior then let's see what is the significance of private private members are accessible only by the members of its own class that is in simple words you can say you can access it only within the class you cannot access it outside you can access it only within the class you cannot access it outside members are accessible only by the members of its own class only by the other members of its own class private members are not accessible outside so remember the point which we discussed yesterday if you want to access within then you need you don't need any object and dot operator 
let's take the yesterday's example access demo within so if you want to access within the class you don't need any dot operator now that is for static members a static member if it want to call another static member you don't need any dot operator so as a static member if it want to access instance member so you need to create object and access with dot operator but when you want to access it outside you need object and dot operator for instance members for static members you use class name and dot operator now what i what i am talking about now where all we can access private members private members are only accessible within the class only accessed by the members of its own class it's what private members outside no one can access whether you use object and dot operator or whether you use class name and dot operator private members are not accessible outside but memory allocation happens when you create object for the child not only the memory allocates for child also for the parent it allocates but whenever you try to call them you cannot call them if it is a private you cannot call it outside the class if it is a private then what happens when you don't specify any keyword when you don't specify any keyword they are accessed by the members of its own class child class also but child class in same package means in the same folder and another class another class means not a child another class in same package correct that's the reason i said package private so if you don't use any keyword for a variable or a method then that is accessible inside a package now what is package package is a folder so within the folder whatever the dot java files you have all those dot java files will be able to access this package private members so when i say package private when you don't specify any modifier then what about the protected when it comes to protected by the members of its by the members of its own class child class in same package other class in same package members of its own class child class in same package another class in same package look at this child in another package child in another package so child class can be in another folder still able to access the parent members if it is protected now when it comes to public by the members of its own class child class in same package another class in same package child in another and another in another also so in short you can say everywhere you can access public members are accessible everywhere you can also write it in another way package private is Private plus
child in same another in same pack then how do you write protected protected is package private plus child in another how do we write package private oh, sorry how do we write public public you can write it as everywhere or you can say protected plus another and another okay So we spoke about access modifiers, but before we move on, move on to access modifiers, we were talking about will the memory allocation happens when I create object for child object. Sorry, will the memory allocation happens for parent members when the child object is created? Yes, when you create objects for the child, not only the child class members but also the parent class members gets involved. Now. Let's okay. Any, any questions before I move on further? All right. So let me talk about constructors in inheritance now. So far we are talking about access specifiers and object creation in inheritance. Let's talk about constructors in inheritance. Now observe, I am defining a constructor. Yeah, no complaints. Right, here too. So what happens? You are able to define constructor. So let's talk about them. The point one. The point one. Uh, when we don't, when we don't define uh, before that. When your constructor executes, constructor gets invoke when object is created. So normally constructor gets called when object is created, right? Now the question is, when you don't write constructor, what happens? The constructor executes when the object is created, that was fine. But when you don't write constructor, what happens? When we don't Define any constructor, your Java compiler provides a, provides a default. Java compiler provides a default means in case if you are not writing any constructor, in case if you are not writing any constructor, then your compiler provides a default. Your compiler provides a default. This is how your default looks like. Class name, no arguments, 
then bracket open, bracket close. This is how your default looks like. So who will provide a default? Compiler. When the compiler provides a default, when you don't define any constructors. Now the parent class got no constructors. The parent class got no constructor, but our child got constructors. So what happens to the parent? The default constructor is provided by the compiler. Now, one more interesting thing. We know that constructor executes when the object is created, right? When we create object of child class not only the child class constructor but also the parent class constructor gets invoked when we create object of child class when we create object of child class not only the child class constructor but also the parent class constructor gets invoked now my child class has got constructors so when I create object they get executed but they get executed fine but I have written a point that when you create object for the child not only the child constructor executes but also the parent but that does parent got one constructor parent got no constructor then how who will get executed then who will get executed you got the question the question is there is a point called when we create object constructor executes when we create object for the child, child constructor executes as well as parent constructor executes. But in this scenario, we only have the children having the constructors, not the parent. Now what happens in this case? Yep. Yeah, the compiler will create the default one? Yeah, the compiler provides the default. Alright, the compiler provides the default. So the default constructor gets invoked. Your child class, when I create object for the child class, child class constructor executes. Child class constructor executes and child class constructor executes and that's gonna call the parent class constructor and in the parent class there is no constructor so if there is no constructor in the parent class the compiler provides a default this is perfect now now I do this now what happens Now my child class has got parameterized constructor. Now my child class has got parameterized constructor. Now my parent got no constructor. But where is this name variable? The name variable is in the parent. The name variable is in the parent. Now what I would like to do is I would like to pass it to the parent. So using super, I try to pass it to the parent. And you see, hey, there is no constructor with string argument is defined. When you don't write any constructor, compiler provides a default. But when you try to write one, so I try to use a personal customer with argument and I would like to pass that argument to the parent. 
Now, this will not be provided by default. Compiler provides a default argument, but compiler don't provide an argument. So that's what the complaint here. The constructor customer with string argument is not defined. So here I'll provide a I provide one. Now you don't see exception here, right? You got it out of the exception from the super keyword because your parent got a constructor with argument. Your parent got a constructor with argument. But now why see, listen, listen, listen here, observe carefully here. In the parent there is no constructor. In the parent there is no constructor then there is a red color mark in the personal customer. Look at the personal customer class. You see a red color mark. It says that parent doesn't have a argumented constructor. Right? Parent doesn't have a argumented constructor. You see the constructor, the constructor customer with string is undefined. The moment I define a constructor here, Something got okay. Just give me a minute. I'll come back to it. Okay. Now. Now in the parent, I'm defining a constructor. So there was a red color mark in the personal customer. Now, to fix that, I am defining a constructor in the parent. The moment I define a constructor in the parent, you don't see a red color mark in the personal customer. But immediately, there is a red color mark in the commercial. Why? The reason is, when you write a constructor, the compiler don't provide a default. When we don't define, compiler provides a default. But when we when we define when we define compiler do not provide default. In case if you write a constructor, compiler do not provide a default. Now in the customer class, you define a constructor with argument. Since you define a constructor, your compiler is not providing a default. And your commercial customer is trying to call default. Are you calling, are you calling a default constructor? Are you doing this? You are not. And the call is automatic. The call is automatic. Right, let me write that point too. When constructors are default or no argumented or no argumented child constructor automatically calls the parent. So when you have no argumented constructors or default constructors, when you have no argumented constructors or default constructor, your child constructor automatically calls the parent. So what happens? Your child class constructor, it is trying to call the default parent. But what happens? When you define a constructor in the parent class or when you define a constructor, your compiler doesn't provide a default. The moment I remove this, there is a default constructor. So there is no error in the commercial customer, but there is an error in the personal customer. 
because personal customer is trying to call a argumented concern. So in order to fix the error in the personal customer, I am trying to add a constructor in the commercial, I am trying to add a constructor in the parent. So the moment I add a constructor in the parent, parent got a argumented and not a default. Whereas your commercial customer automatically tries to call the default. But it won't find default because compiler don't provide a default when somebody is creating a constructor. So you see an error here. So you have options. The option one is make your commercial customer also call the argumented argumented parent. Make your commercial customer also call the argumented parent. Otherwise, otherwise, you come to the parent and add one more constructor with no arguments. So you have two solutions. In the parent, you write a default constructor. That solves the problem. Otherwise, you don't write a default in the parent make your child call the argumented parent. When constructors are default or no argumented, child constructor automatically calls the parent. And when constructors are argumented, then child constructor when child constructor should call the parent then child constructor should call the parent explicitly using super now who is super super is a keyword which helps in invoking parent constructor invoking parent constructor from child invoking parent constructor from the child super is a keyword which helps in invoking parent constructor from a child and there are other uses of super that we will discuss later. Yeah. Is, is everything clear or any questions for me on this constructor part with respect to inheritance? Alright, if no questions and uh, I would oh. like to stop. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was wondering, can uh, constructors be declared private? Yes, you can. But okay, and how does that affect? Yeah, how it affects, you're going to see that. Mm, it's day 5. So, let me create a class called Run Customer the main method then as suggested I make it as a private okay I, I think you don't need a run customer class without that also we can make it so what I did the custom the constructor I made as a private right and the command I made as a private you see the red color marks here Right. So from the child class, whenever you have an argumented constructor, whenever you have an argumented constructor, the child constructors should explicitly call the parent one, right? Right. So when your child constructors are explicitly trying to call the parent, when you see a red color mark, it's not visible. Mm -hmm. 
so you cannot access it that is you cannot it, it they were unable to call the parent constructor from the child okay that is one thing and let me do that also let me create the class i just got tell the uh, there will be another problem also i when i try to create object for customer normally you create objects outside only right outside the class now right. we, we did that programs where account object was created in bank class and bank object was created in the run so when i try to create object it won't allow you to create objects because you use this right after new keyword you use something called that is nothing but a constructor but since you declare it as a private it's not accessible outside so it won't let you create objects right so the best let you okay. create objects so you can still use private keyword and but when you use private keyword it will stop people from creating the objects of the class right there is a advantage now this is a you you you, see, you think it has a disadvantage but there is an advantage to it too so we we use something called inversion of control i think probably it's a, it's a part of the training curriculum they use something called spring ioc i'm not sure whether you guys heard of it or not so spring ioc there are some design patterns so some of the design pattern says okay why you want to create the memory again and again and again or why you want to create the object again and again and again why can't i use the same object why you keep on creating the object and releasing it keep on creating the object memory and releasing it why can't i create one object and fold it and i can use the same thing again and again and at the end i'll release it so in those cases these private constructors are very handy because you don't allow people to create the object outside so there is something called singleton design pattern so according to the singleton design pattern you won't create object again and again that is you won't be using a new operator to allocate the memory again and again you just give the object only once and that object will be used so but you should prevent people from creating object how do you prevent people from creating object that is you just make it as private then you don't allow people to create object of it so we will discuss design patterns is also a part of a curriculum so when i discuss that then you will understand what is the advantage of constructor being a private now for time being it seems to be a disadvantage but later it will be a big advantage of constructor being a private okay so basically we can uh, declare an object of a class inside the class if say the constructor is private yeah we can do that in the same class okay okay we can create an object take some other method public void say this is inside a class then you can create the object okay it won't complain right okay yep any other questions okay if no questions all right we'll stop here and uh, I, i i would like you people to finish off the last day activity so that you know tomorrow we're going to do another activity which will be extending the last day one, last one means we're going to add few more things to the existing one like you know i discussed today customer personal customer and commercial customer but in the yesterday's activity there was only customer right so we try to add inheritance concept to the activity so i want you people to finish up that so that you know you understand the next concept better okay. all right guys okay no questions we'll stop here we'll catch you in the next session and uh, we will forward the recordings of yesterday's and today's all right maybe within an hour or two thank you